Now, if you thought you'd got your head around the idea of 3D printing, scientists are already working on the upgrade, aptly named 4D printing. The possibilities are extraordinary, but in its simplest terms, if you're anything like me and totally hopeless at putting together flat pack furniture, this concept could create furniture that actually builds itself. Take a look at this. This tube, which has been immersed in water, is made of several different materials, one of which expands 150 times when exposed to water. As that material grows, the outer layers constrain it and force the tube to bend into a three-dimensional shape. Well, the time it takes is the fourth dimension. Confused, I am. Skylar Tibbetts is from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He's behind this and can explain further. He's at the TED conference in Los Angeles. Skylar, I, I get the 3D printing element, but it's this concept of time being the fourth dimension that has totally confused me. Please explain. Yeah, so the, the fourth dimension, the idea is that instead of printing static objects, we print objects that can change over time. And so they adapt or they evolve after they come off the print bed. And so we're talking about actual physical things that can then change shape. Yes, exactly. It's sort of like robotics without wires or motors. And you're printing objects that when subject to water, they can transform into something else. And it's not just water, it can be heat or vibrations or even sound. Right now, we have one material, this 4D printed material, and it expands 150 times by water. But in the future, we're hoping to have heat, shaking, uh, pressure, maybe sound, other materials that could do this. Now, I just um, jokingly said that, you know, we're talking about flat pack furniture that can build itself. Really, what can this be used for? I think uh, many high performance products or products that don't necessarily need to be static, they could adapt to how the user uh, is, is interacting with those products or scenarios where um, the product needs to have high performance and then can evolve as you use it in different conditions. So you're talking about um, one example you gave was water pipes that can then kind of almost grow themselves. Yeah, and so we've been looking at um, different, different types of products and, and furniture and, and materials and construction or manufacturing and, and the infrastructure one where water pipes expand or contract for different capacities and flow rates. So instead of fixed pipes, you, you have these adapting pipes completely on their own. It just sounds completely fascinating, Skylar. In terms of commercially, where are you with this? When can we actually see this? It's still very much research at the moment, and it's a collaboration with Stratasys, which is a major 3D printing company. They've developed the printers and the materials to do it. And so we don't yet have any plans to put it on the market, but I'm hoping that we can get more excitement and, who, and soon have these products on the market. Fascinating stuff. Skylar Tibbetts from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Thank you very much for joining us. Incredible what can be done these days. Thanks very much, Skylar. Well, you heard it there first. There's much more, of course, on our website there, Sharon G, but it just sounds extraordinary. From Sharon G. It does indeed, Kasia. Thanks for watching Newsday from both of us.